what's going on everyone this is Smitty here in this video talking about how the rating system needs to change from Madden from it being about numerical ratings to straight up abilities and traits you know I mean we see the traits you know that are in Madden right now you know the you have those um, but they need to take precedence instead of it being about the numerical rating I mean of course it's gonna be in the background but what I'm saying is it needs to be like how APF had it in the forefront the abilities were up front and it wasn't until the hex editing came about that you know now you could see all the numbers behind the you know behind the uh, skills and everything but what I like about this is that when you look at various players and you look at all the different abilities that you have here you can like I mean there isn't there isn't a scouting report on a player whether they're playing or they're you know coming into the league that you couldn't use these abilities for to truly depict what they're capable of or what they excel at whether they're good or you know um, you know yeah like whether they're average good or potentially elite level out the gate or uh, for a player that you know builds his builds his credibility up as a player to be one of the elites in certain aspects you know within a desired a uh, particular position like for example you have recently retired Brett Favre okay I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that if Brett Favre when he first when he first came out you know when he was playing in Atlanta and he wasn't really doing much of anything as of yet I'm pretty sure that they would have looked at him and said okay he's got a quick release and he's got a he probably has you know he's got a laser arm and he also looking at the I wouldn't necessarily say a speed burner but he definitely would be a quarterback that could scramble now those skill levels would probably be at a bronze because he's not proven yet but then as we all seen throughout his Packer days he would definitely be at an elite level like he would he would have laser, he'd be gold laser arm gold pocket presence gold scrambler um, gold rocket arm you know what I'm saying definitely a passing threat you know he would be like he would have numerous abilities added on in addition and that's stuff that would be progressive and then when you look at a more um, a more current player like I'll take Indomitian Sue from his days when he was a lion he definitely would have the big hit definitely be a bull rush definitely had closing speed um, um, a reach tackle without question sack master um also he's good you know he he can get he gets into the backfield and stops the runs at times he disrupts it and even with him ripping sometimes he will rip through and get into the backfield see what i'm saying and you can have him at gold and silver levels accordingly but this is depicting what he's able to do and i'm not saying nothing about a, a, a numerical rating and now you just have traits and tendencies that go along with it and it makes a lot more sense that way you see what I'm saying that way when you're talking about and I know that it's a marketing tool to post the numbers and all that stuff of the top five and all those positions but when they talk about it on NFL Network which many people casual and diehard fans watch when they talk about top five and top ten players they talk about stats traits and abilities they're not talking about well according to Madden he's got a 95 like no they're going straight up off of what they did off of their body of work that they did that year now if they didn't do well that year then they may not be in that top five you see what I'm saying and th the same could apply to the video game it doesn't necessarily have to play to a fan favorite it's just like well based off of what they did he excelled in this he excelled in that but he faltered in these other areas and you know you can use that to talk about it like let's say you know like for example because Des Bryant was out with injury right he would take a hit in some of these areas in terms of his skills he would go from probably from gold to silver you know some areas possibly from silver to bronze because he's got to prove himself because he had limited performance now he proves it then you bump up his skills accordingly and that's it and 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 you're not seeing a numerical rating on the surface it's more about an ability set and that's it nothing more than that that's what I'm saying it needs to be in Madden because especially in CFMs when you're playing in CFM and you see how people you see how granular things get when you look at combine numbers and and, and uh, like when you have the, the rookies do the combine you have all that combine data 
but then we're at the end of the day all we're concerned about is their numerical overall rating and that's it we're not looking at those combine stats and really taking them to heart as we should be now we take it we take it you know we take it in conjunction to what's the numerical rating going to be in those areas but it needs to be more about abilities have those combine numbers but combine them with a scouting report a detailed scouting report you know what I mean not necessarily in detail but like a brief summary talking about where that player does and where he excels at so I'm gonna show two more examples just to further solidify what I'm getting at so I'll be back with those two points here to, to uh, round the video out here all right guys now on this next point here this is what I'm talking about Madden 08 okay now some of these abilities are now you know part of the game as uh, part of the whole rating tree but the point is that we need to get it more granular you don't need to have as many rating criteria or if you're gonna have what, what I mean is we don't need to see a O lineman with a with a throw power or throw accuracy or anything like that have the traits that pertain to them have the skills that pertain to them and that's it nothing more nothing less okay get more granular like sites like pro football focus like if they're going to analyze and break them down they're not going to break them break down a o lineman based off of his kicking ability you know his ability to hit a field goal or his ability to complete a 10 20 30 40 yard pass downfield you see what i'm saying so that needs to get more granular but getting to the point here this is what i'm talking about these abilities that you had in madden like is it the exact same thing that's in APF? No, but they did it in their own way. And these are all the things that we need. This is what this would help with, depict, with uh, depicting those aspects and elements within the game accordingly. You know what I'm saying? Just to, like I said, just to add a little bit more, you know, shed a little bit more light on what was done before. And I mean, there are some people they may have never touched Madden 08, but this is a point that I wanted to, to, uh, to show. Here. and then even with that when you look at this here like what they're talking about with uh, the weapons and mismatches like mismatches pinpoint the best player to use on a play hold the left trigger during the play reveal the mismatches that you know this all helps with counters you know like you have abilities that are that that um, work offensively but then also you have you had counters to him and that was the beautiful thing about this was that while yes you look at these weapons and yes you have a good amount of offensive uh weaponry here but at the same time you also have weapons and elements of those weapons that would help make counterpoints against those offensive uh players so it was so in that way you know you had a way of challenging it to an extent you know um whether uh in terms of your play call and especially with what kind of player personnel was out there and i think spotlighting the receiver was introduced this year so i mean in uh madden 08 i think so you had you know you had ways and means of counteracting what was done offensively on the defensive side of the ball too but my point is that these are the things that you need in the game here okay so i got one last point to make here and i'll round up the bit to close the video out here this is the last point that i want to make using some real you know uh scouting reports here now you see here draft pick eli apple all right just looking through some of the information here this is the kind of stuff that we would need to see like for a player that we're scouting within CFM like I said you know um, previously you have the the numbers you know you have their combine stats and everything they did as far as their performance like you see here you can measure their height length weight their hands you can look at all the drill numbers and everything along with it but look at this I'm just gonna read this read a little bit of this real quick okay good height weight arm length combination clean footwork in transition with natural ability to mirror and match from press coverage uh, let's see has uh, extremely competitive when the ball is in the air has strength to redirect uh, receivers from their routes aggressive hands in coverage and fights hard to disrupts catches by any means necessary see what I'm saying and then you can talk about on the flip side with their weaknesses too no uh, if he senses a receiver getting over top of him 
he becomes Mr. Grabs and he starts grabbing onto receivers. So his tendency to get beat, for example. I mean, you can pull up the report if you wanted to see it firsthand, but you get the point that I'm getting at here. Now, this is for a rookie. But then you have a guy that's been around for a few years, you know, well-established player. Like, this is Golden Tate. And this was like when we had, you know, when we had brought him in, basically what they're saying is, okay, he has exceptional hands and will make the tough catch, rarely drops a pass, much better blocker than most people would expect for a man his size. Um, let's see here. He's not a burner, but me, can I'm, I'm beat his man deep, and, and he's excellent in gaining separation and making yards after catch. See what I'm, see what I'm saying? Between both of those scouting reports, you could take abilities from APF, from, from APF, and I've shown you those abilities there, and you could even take from Madden those abilities you see there, and you can make, you know, the combination of abilities and traits. Like, you're hearing the traits, the abilities, and the tendencies right within these scouting reports. So then you look at that, and then you put that on the surface, people are going to be able to relate to that um it'll take it'll be an adjustment period because you're talking about going from people seeing those numbers that they've been used to seeing for decades now and going to those numbers being completely removed and behind the scenes but this is the best way to articulate it in terms of the translation according to what we see every you know these these um over these weeks, these weeks during the football season and even in the postseason on NFL Total Access and Sports Center, you don't see numerical ratings shown. You see what I mean? And when we talk about the ultimate team modes and everything, look at NBA Live Mobile, and this this I'll close it out here. Look at NBA Live Mobile and look at how they have those players. Yes, they do. They use numerical ratings, but at the same time, what if they didn't have them? If they did not have those ratings. And you just had players, you had uh, abilities that reflected, abilities and even icon attributes that reflected what they're good at and even what they're not good at and what they need to work on. That in turn, when it comes to you having your weekly practices or when you get your cards in mutt and everything, or you know, um, you have the different color levels to work with. This guy's an elite level this. This guy's a mid-level this. This guy's a silver or gold or bronze or amethyst or, you know, any color you want to go with, you know, going off of like what 2K has with the My Team. They have all different colors to, to you know, to distinguish what guy's good at this and what level they're at, what level card they are. It's no different than what Madden has with the elite and all that stuff. Do the exact same thing here. And when it comes to, and one likes it to close the, uh, when it comes to CFM, you can really make an impact with that because when you draft a player that he may excel in one or two things, but he's lackluster in other areas, you can work towards getting him out of those bad badges and getting him into a badge that, you know, that is uh, more reflective of his ability and expand upon that. So then that's the whole player development aspect of it you're bringing into the fold here. And you don't have it governed by a numeric rating that you can see like, okay, if I get him to 70, then he's going to like, no. It's going to be more about what you do off the field with training and game prep. And then what you do in the game in terms of using him accordingly within, you know, uh, within your offense or defense. See what I'm saying? So let me know what you guys think. You know, um... Let your thoughts be known in the comment section. Definitely like, comment, subscribe. And until the next video, you guys, I'll be back with more. Until next time, y'all take care. Peace. Thanks a lot for your support on today's video. And don't forget to like, comment, and if you definitely want more content like this, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. Definitely follow me on social media as well. And tune in live right here on YouTube with myself, Cement Ball Critic, and Azure Effect for the Sim Standard Google Hangout. Until next time, guys, take care. Be safe. Peace.